So we just had a chance to review Pearson's R, that it ranges in value from negative 1 to positive 1, that the farther R is, Pearson's R is from 0, the stronger the correlation. So a Pearson's R of negative 0.8 is strong. In fact, it's stronger than a positive Pearson's R of 0.2, because that negative 0.8 is further. We also talked about the scatter plot, and if you were to draw a best fitting line through those dots, the closer those dots are to the line, the stronger the correlation is. And in fact, if the dots fell exactly on the line, you'd have a perfect correlation, allowing you to make perfect predictions. Then we discussed the requirements for Pearson's R. Both variables must be scale, that is, equal size intervals. Um, height has equal size intervals, 1 foot, 2 foot, 3 foot, 4 foot, and so on. Neither distribution should be highly skewed. Pearson's R expects that the distributions are normally distributed, and if they're highly skewed, that violates that assumption. And number three, the relationship between the two variables must not be curvilinear. And I'll go over that in a little bit more detail in a moment. So let's take a look at our example here. Uh, we're going to be considering um, anxiety and sleep and looking at the relationship between them. And notice that in SPSS that the uh, measure for anxiety and sleep is scale. If uh, it had been nominal, that is categorical data where you just give uh, numbers as names like what state are you born in? One is California, two is Arkansas, and so on. Don't use uh, Pearson's R. If it's ordinal, such as how often do you go skiing? Uh, every day, once a week, once a month, uh, once a year. Notice that the distance between once a day and once a week is pretty close. Between once a month and once a year, it's pretty far. Not equal size intervals. So you have to have equal size intervals. Uh, height, weight, um, how often do you brush your teeth? Uh, these are examples of scale data, uh, numbers that you're, you could add and subtract and work with. So anxiety and sleep, they're both scale. Okay, then let's actually go and analyze this data. So I'm going to analyze each of these variables separately, anxiety and sleep. And I want to make sure that neither is highly skewed. I also want to know what is the mean and standard deviation for these variables so I can report them later. So lots of ways to do this. I use the Analyze drop-down menu. Descriptive statistics frequencies. I have anxiety and sleep already moved over. Uh, for statistics, I have mean checked and standard deviation checked. For charts, I have the histogram. You can do it with or without the normal curve up to you. And I don't need the frequency table here, so I had it unchecked. I say OK. And let's see what we got here. So what I have is that um, for anxiety and sleep, I have the mean for anxiety, the standard deviation for anxiety. For sleep, I have the mean for uh, sleep and the standard deviation for sleep. Notice that uh, there was one person who didn't respond uh, regarding how anxious they felt, and this could have been the same person or a different person who didn't respond in terms of how much sleep they were getting. That's okay. In terms of the histogram, here's a histogram for anxiety, and over here is a histogram for sleep. Now remember, you can only proceed with Pearson's R if neither of these distributions is highly skewed. These are pretty decent. Uh, in fact, they look rather nice. So what does it mean for a distribution of highly skewed? I have a little picture over here. Essentially, if it's highly skewed, it should just jump out and scream at you that it is highly skewed. So highly skewed, uh, here's a case where there's lots and lots of low scores, and then there's this really long tail going out to the right. It's uh, positively skewed. Um, and so if you see a really strong, uh, highly skewed distribution, just stop. Um, don't go any further. Uh, instead, you'd have to find another way to report uh, the relationship between the variables. OK, so what did we do as a review? We uh, used the Analyze drop-down menu. We chose the script of statistics and then the frequencies. Uh, and from there, we requested the mean standard deviation and also histogram. Uh, we made sure that neither of the variables was highly skewed, and we also now know the mean standard deviation report later on. Okay, next step, we want to go ahead and evaluate the scatter plot. So here we are for a scatter plot. It would be graphs, chart builder. And I'm going to choose scatter dot, and I'm going to go with my simple scatter dot. I just double clicked here. I'm going to, uh, let's say I want to go ahead and predict uh, anxiety based upon sleep. So sleep is going to be my predictor, and anxiety is going to be my criterion. Then I'll go ahead and click OK. And here is the scatter plot. Scatter plot looks fine. If the scatter plot had looked really curvilinear, like a rainbow, then I would have been concerned. But since it doesn't look like a, a strong curvilinear, I can go.